pants. You figure it out. That takes me back to the honeymoon. <laughs> In 1986, a little-known TV station called Fox aired a show named Married with Children for the first time. Initially, the show didn't gain much traction, but its fortunes changed due to an unexpected event. An activist actions inadvertently boosted the show's popularity, leading to its eventual success. The series became a classic, leaving a lasting impact on television history. The story behind the scenes is as fascinating as the show itself, revealing how unintended consequences can significantly shape a TV program's destiny. Let's delve into the intriguing tale of how this series rose to fame. Are you ready to give up yet? I am not. Just so happens that I have three unbroken... Peggy Bundy, the namesake of Mercy's character in Married with Children, had a close friend on the show named Marcy Darcy. Interestingly, before the show's release, it was known by a different working title, which was not the Cosby's. The opening sequence of the show featured footage from the movie National Lampoon's Vacation. Peggy Bundy, played by actress Katie Sagal, was a memorable character on the show. She was known for her laziness and love for shopping, often at the expense of her husband, Al Bundy. Her best friend, Marcy Darcy, portrayed by Amanda Bears, was a stark contrast to Peggy's character. Marcy was a successful banker and often clashed with Al Bundy, much to Peggy's amusement. The show's original working title, Not the Cosby's, was likely chosen to differentiate it from the popular sitcom, The Cosby Show. However, it was ultimately changed to Married with Children before its release. The opening sequence of the show featured a clip from the movie National Lampoon's Vacation, which showed the Griswold family driving down the highway in their station wagon. The clip was edited to include the show's title and theme song, Love and Marriage by Frank Sinatra. Overall, Peggy Bundy and Marcy Darcy's friendship was a highlight of Married with Children. The show's original working title and opening sequence added an interesting layer to its history, making it a memorable part of 80s television. Take this and like it. I hate you. Kids. <laughs> In the long-running TV series, the main character, Al Bundy, is well known for driving a banged-up old car. However, contrary to popular belief, his car is not a Dodge, but a 1972 Plymouth Duster. The car, with its rusted exterior and worn-out interior, becomes a symbol of Al's blue-collar job and mediocre life. As the series progresses, Al's car remains a constant presence, serving as his trusty steed through thick and thin. Despite its shabby appearance, Al takes great pride in his car and is often seen tinkering with it in his garage. In the final episode of the show, which aired on May 6, 1997, the cast was unaware that it would be the last one. In fact, the executives at Fox canceled the show without informing them, leaving the cast and crew in shock. The episode, titled How to Marry a Moron, follows Al and his family as they navigate through a series of comedic misunderstandings and mishaps. Throughout the episode, Al's car remains a reliable companion, ferrying him and his family to various locations as they try to resolve their issues. The final scene shows Al driving off into the sunset, symbolizing the end of an era and leaving fans with a sense of nostalgia. In conclusion, Al Bundy's car in the show, a 1972 Plymouth Duster, becomes an essential part of the series, representing Al's working class status and serving as a reliable companion throughout the show's run. The sudden cancellation of the show left the cast and crew in shock, but the final episode provides a satisfying conclusion to the series, with Al driving off into the sunset in his beloved car. Okay, who wants a tangwich? In 1987, the TV series that would later become a cultural phenomenon faced significant challenges during its initial airing. The show, which starred Ed O'Neill as the lovable Kermigen Al Bundy, was not an instant hit due to the small size and limited reach of the Fox network. At the time, Fox was still a fledgling network, struggling to gain a foothold in the highly competitive world of television. Despite these challenges, the show persevered and eventually found its audience. However, O'Neill himself did not learn of the show's cancellation until much later in a somewhat unexpected way. As he recounted in an interview, he was having dinner in a restaurant when a couple at a nearby table recognized him and mentioned that they had enjoyed watching the show. During their conversation, they happened to mention that the show had been canceled. Taken aback, O'Neill thanked the couple for their kind words and even offered to pay for their meal as a gesture of appreciation. 
It was only later that he learned the truth about the show's cancellation, which had been premature and ultimately reversed due to fan outcry and the efforts of the show's creators. Despite its initial struggles, the show went on to become one of the longest-running sitcoms in television history, airing for a total of 11 seasons and cementing its place in the cultural zeitgeist. O'Neill's performance as Al Bundy remains one of his most iconic roles, and the show itself remains a beloved classic to this day. They keep it awfully hot in here, don't they? <laughs> Peggy, you just put a dollar bill down. In the third season of the show, an episode titled Her Cups Runneth Over gained significant media attention. A family values activist had taken issue with the content, leading to a protest that ultimately boosted the program's popularity. This episode featured Peggy Bundy, played by Katie Sagal, who had a distinctive and memorable style. Peggy Bundy's signature look consisted of big, red hair and tight-fitting clothes. Her hairstyle was large and voluminous, often styled in a high bouffant. This eye-catching hairdo was complemented by her fashion choices, which typically included form-fitting outfits that accentuated her figure. The combination of her flamboyant hair and clothing made Peggy Bundy an unforgettable character. Peggy's red hair was iconic and became a significant part of her identity. It was always styled in the same exaggerated manner, making it instantly recognizable to viewers. Her hair was often accessorized with hair clips or bows, adding a playful touch to her overall appearance. In addition to her hair, Peggy's clothing was also noteworthy. She frequently wore tight-fitting dresses, leggings, and skirts, often in bold colors or patterns. Her outfits were typically paired with high heels, adding to her distinctive style. Despite the criticism that her clothing choices received from some quarters, Peggy's style remained a defining characteristic of her character throughout the show's run. Overall, the media attention brought about by the protest and Peggy Bundy's unique style helped to boost the show's popularity. The character of Peggy Bundy, with her distinctive red hair and tight-fitting clothes, became a memorable and enduring part of the show's legacy. Well, I uh, had a little fender bender with a rather large gentleman. Ed O'Neill, already known for his dramatic roles, was an unexpected but successful choice for the lead in the TV series. Producers were initially uncertain about casting him, but his portrayal of Al Bundy quickly won them over. O'Neill's comedic timing and ability to bring depth to the character made him a standout. In 2011, O'Neill received a star on Hollywood's Walk of Fame, an honor that was fitting given his role in the show. His star is located in front of a shoe store, a nod to his character's profession as a shoe salesman. During the show's run, lucky fans received personal phone calls from O'Neill who made them collect calls as Al Bundy. These calls were a surprise and delight for fans, creating a memorable connection to the show and its star. O'Neill's willingness to engage with fans in this way added to his appeal and helped to solidify his place as a beloved television actor. The success of the show and O'Neill's performance and it proved that he was more than just a dramatic actor. His ability to make fans laugh and to bring a complex character to life on screen was a testament to his talent and versatility as an actor. O'Neill's impact on television comedy is still felt today, and his star on the Walk of Fame serves as a reminder of his contributions to the world of entertainment. The memories of his phone calls to fans continue to be cherished by those who were lucky enough to receive them. Now, especially if these numbers come up. <laughs> the film's lead actor, Ed O'Neill, faced conflicts with his co-star Amanda Bears, who played Marcy Darcy, the tension between them began in the third season and continued throughout the show's run. Despite this, the cast and crew were able to maintain a professional atmosphere on set. A beloved member of the Bundy family was Buck, their pet dog. Buck appeared in the show until the tenth season and brought a lot of joy to the audience. Unfortunately, Buck crossed the Rainbow Bridge in 1996, leaving a void in the hearts of the cast and fans. David Garrison, who played Steve Rhodes, left the show after the first season to pursue live theater. He appeared in one episode per season afterward, much to the delight of the fans. His character's brief appearances added a touch of nostalgia to the show. In summary, the film had its fair share of cast conflicts, but the cast and crew were able to work through them. The Bundy family's pet dog, Buck, was a beloved character who brought joy to the audience. David Garrison's character, Steve Rhodes, left the show after the first season but made brief appearances in later seasons, much to the delight of the fans. 
<laughs> I'd like to tell you that I want you to tie up the rest of my body and all, but I... In the world of 1980s television, the show Married with Children stood out for its unique blend of humor and family dynamics. However, few people know that the characters of Kelly and Bud Bundy underwent significant changes before the show's official release. After the unaired pilot, the actors playing these roles were recast, leading to the introduction of Christina Applegate and David Faustino. The show became the longest-running live-action TV series on Fox, yet it never won an Emmy. Despite this, the show's impact on popular culture was undeniable. The show's creators cleverly incorporated elements of the actors' real lives into their characters, adding depth and authenticity to their performances. Ed O'Neill, who played the patriarch Al Bundy, brought his own experiences to the role. His character's love for football and his working-class background were inspired by O'Neill's own life. Similarly, David Faustino, who played Bud Bundy, drew from his own experiences as a young adult to portray the character's struggles with adolescence and self-esteem. The show's creators also incorporated Faustino's interest in hip-hop music into Bud's character, making him a fan of the genre. This addition not only made Bud a more relatable character, but also reflected the growing popularity of hip-hop music during the 1980s and 1990s. Despite its success, the show's failure to win an Emmy was a disappointment to many. However, the show's enduring legacy and impact on popular culture cannot be denied. Its unique blend of humor and family dynamics, along with the incorporation of the actor's real-life experiences, made it a standout show in the world of 1980s television. Fell. Yes, Cupcake. <laughs> I fell. Katie Sagel's pregnancies while filming the show brought about some changes. The writers either incorporated her pregnancies into the script or cleverly hid them from the audience's view. For instance, during her first pregnancy, the character Peggy wore large clothing to conceal her baby bump. Unfortunately, the show was canceled due to high syndication costs. Sony charged an exorbitant amount of $1 million per episode, which led to its eventual cancellation. This left many fans disappointed, as the show had gained a significant following during its run. Moreover, Season 3, Episode 8, is considered the lost episode as it was not aired in the U.S. until 22. The reasons for its initial shelving remain unclear, but its delayed release certainly added to the show's mystique. In summary, the show's cancellation, high syndication costs, and the lost episode all contributed to the show's unique history. Despite these challenges, the series remains a beloved classic among its fans. Pig! <laughs> Oh, Peg, look, car bras! <laughs> In the tenth season of the show, Christina Applegate, who played the role of Kelly, had to wear a wig. This was because of her commitment to another project, the movie Nowhere. Applegate's character, Kelly, was known for her long, flowing hair, and the wig ensured that her hairstyle remained consistent throughout the season. Another notable change in the show was the disappearance of the character Seven, played by Shane Sweet. Seven was the son of the Rhodes family, who were neighbors to the Bundys. After the seventh season, Seven disappeared without any explanation. In fact, he was later shown on a milk carton, indicating that he was missing. The names of the two main families in the show, the Bundys and the Rhodes, were taken from professional wrestlers. The Bundy family was named after King Kong Bundy, a well-known wrestler in the 1980s. Similarly, the Rhodes family was named after Dusty Rhodes, a legendary wrestler who was known for his charisma and talent in the ring. The use of wrestling names for the families was a clever way to add a layer of humor to the show. Wrestling was a popular form of entertainment in the 1980s, though, and the names of the wrestlers were well known to the audience. By using these names, the show was able to tap into the cultural zeitgeist of the time and create a connection with the audience. In conclusion, the show underwent some significant changes in its later seasons, with Christina Applegate wearing a wig and the disappearance of the character Seven. The names of the two main families were also inspired by professional wrestlers, which added to the show's unique humor and appeal. Aren't you three ashamed of yourselves? You mean in general or because of this uh, wank? In the second season of the show, a minor controversy arose when it was discovered that Al Bundy's shoe store where he worked as a salesman, displayed a Vista credit card logo instead of Visa. This led to a cease and desist letter from Visa, and the show had to digitally alter the logo in subsequent airings. 
One of the most memorable episodes of the series, titled I'll See You in Court, was banned from airing due to its explicit content. In this episode, Al and his friends formed a men's club called No Man, which stood for National Organization of Men Against Amazonian Masterhood. The episode revolved around the group's plan to create a sex tape, but Fox refused to air it due to its inappropriate content. The No Man Club became a recurring theme in the show, serving as a humorous representation of working class men's frustration with feminism and political correctness. The club's name was a playful jab at feminist organizations, and its members often engaged in misogynistic banter, although they were ultimately portrayed as harmless and well-meaning. Despite its controversial themes and humor, the show remained a popular staple of Fox's programming for over a decade, and its impact on television comedy can still be felt today. The show's irreverent take on family life and its willingness to tackle taboo subjects helped pave the way for modern shows like Family Guy and South Park. Come on, honey. Do it. Take out the garbage. In the initial stages of casting for the show, comedian Sam Kinison was offered the role of Al Bundy, but it ultimately went to Ed O'Neill. O'Neill's Hollywood Walk of Fame star can be found in front of a shoe store, where fans often ask him to sign their shoes, a nod to his character's profession in the series. Interestingly, Roseanne Barr was considered for the part of Peggy Bundy, but she declined. The show, which gained a significant following, featured Al Bundy as a struggling shoe salesman and father of two, with Peggy as his lazy and promiscuous wife. Despite the initial consideration of other actors, O'Neill's portrayal of Al Bundy became iconic, and his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame serves as a testament to his impact on television. Meanwhile, the shoe store where fans ask for O'Neill's autograph serves as a reminder of the character's profession and the show's enduring popularity. <laughs> In 1987, Ed O'Neill made a lasting impression during his audition for the TV series. O'Neill, who went on to play the iconic role of Al Bundy, managed to impress the producers by staying in character throughout the audition process. This level of commitment and immersion in the character was crucial in securing the part for O'Neill, who would go on to become synonymous with the role of Al Bundy. Interestingly, O'Neill was not the only actor who auditioned for the part of Al Bundy. Michael Richards, who would later become famous for his role as Cosmo Kramer on Seinfeld, also tried out for the part. However, Richards' audition did not leave as strong an impression as O'Neill's, and he ultimately lost out on the role. The impact of O'Neill's portrayal of Al Bundy was significant, not only for the show, but also for O'Neill's career. While the role helped to establish O'Neill as a household name, it also had an impact on his film career. In fact, O'Neill was dropped from a movie role after the producers of the film saw him in the show and felt that his portrayal of Al Bundy was too strong, making it difficult for them to see him in any other light. Overall, O'Neill's audition and subsequent portrayal of Al Bundy had a profound impact on the show and his career. His commitment to the character and ability to fully embody the role helped to make Al Bundy one of the most memorable and enduring characters in television history. Meanwhile, Richard's audition for the part serves as a reminder of the many talented actors who were considered for iconic roles, but ultimately did not get the part. Being on the financial edge like this right. all the time, which is also something that spoke right. to... That's you know, right. In the world of 1980s television, the show Married with Children stood out for its unique portrayal of family dynamics. The Bundy couple's names, Al and Peggy, were inspired by a radio comedy show from the 1940s and 1950s, lending a nod to the past while still feeling fresh and modern. Throughout the series, real-life family members of the cast made cameo appearances, adding an extra layer of authenticity and charm. These family cameos were a delight for viewers, offering a glimpse into the personal lives of the actors behind the characters. However, as with many long-running shows, the later seasons of Married with Children were considered to be of lower quality. Starting from season 9, the show's plotline and character development began to falter, leading some fans to tune out. Despite this decline in quality, the show's earlier seasons remained beloved by many, and its impact on television history is undeniable. In conclusion, Married with Children was a groundbreaking show that brought a new level of realism and humor to the sitcom genre. From its nods to classic radio comedy to its memorable family cameos, the show will always hold a special place in television history.
Uh, she's a genius, and we're glad to be here. <laughs> well. In the 1987 TV series, a unique aspect was the use of voiceovers for the family's dog, Buck. Cheech Marin and Kevin Curran provided the thoughts of this lovable yet mischievous character, adding a humorous touch to the show. The voiceovers gave Buck a personality of his own, making him a fan favorite. Interestingly, two young cast members of the show, Christina Applegate and David Fastino, made guest appearances on another popular series of the time, 21 Jump Street. Applegate played a character named Rachel, while Faustino appeared as a troublemaker named Tony. Their appearances on 21 Jump Street showcased their versatility as actors and added to their growing popularity. The use of Buck's voiceovers and the guest appearances of Applegate and Faustino on 21 Jump Street were just a few of the many memorable moments in this iconic TV series. The show's unique blend of humor and drama, along with its memorable characters, helped it to stand out in a crowded television landscape. It's time, Al. Last night you were snoring, and your nose hairs were going in and out like a trombone. Ed O'Neill, the actor who played the role of Al Bundy in the TV series, had his reasons to stay on the show. He was concerned about being typecast in a specific character type and wanted to avoid that. Moreover, his income was on the rise as the show progressed, which also played a significant role in his decision to continue. The character Kelly Bundy, played by Christina Applegate, was rarely seen reading in the show. However, early episodes showed her with Garfield comics, indicating some level of interest in reading. Despite her character's lack of interest in books, Applegate's performance was well received by the audience. As for the show's performance and ratings, it did not do exceptionally well. Its highest rating was 29th place in season 6, which was not a remarkable achievement. Despite the low ratings, the show managed to stay on air for 10 seasons, which is a testament to its enduring popularity among its fan base. In summary, Ed O'Neill's decision to stay on the show was driven by his desire to avoid being typecast and his increasing income. Kelly Bundy's character was not often seen reading, but early episodes showed her interest in Garfield comics. Lastly, the show's ratings were not impressive, with its highest rating being 29th place in season 6. Watching the airports and the train stations and the bus stations, right? Well, there is one. Despite initial struggles with low ratings, the TV series gained massive popularity in syndication. This turn of events allowed the show to reach a wider audience and solidify its place in television history. One actor who played a small but memorable role in the series was Dan Tully's Jr. Confusing Fans. He appeared in two different roles, a cop and an FBI officer. His appearances added an interesting layer to the show, leaving viewers wondering if the two characters were somehow connected. Another peculiar detail in the series was the Bundy's front door. In long shots, it appeared white, but in close-ups, it was distinctly red. This inconsistency, while minor, added to the show's quirky charm and left viewers questioning the set design choices. In the end, the success of the series in syndication, the memorable performances of its actors, and the unique details like the changing door color all contributed to the show's lasting impact on television comedy. You stole my father. <laughs> Katie Sagel, known for her role as Peggy Bundy in the popular 80s TV series, later played Gemma Teller Morrow in Sons of Anarchy. In an interesting turn, Seagull revealed that she drew inspiration from her Peggy Bundy character while portraying Gemma. Despite the show's success, the creators of the TV series emphasized that it was not meant to be political. They focused on creating an entertaining and engaging show without any underlying political message. One notable aspect of the TV series was its use of the sound of a flushing toilet as an iconic trope. This unique sound effect became a memorable part of the show, adding a touch of humor to various scenes. In summary, the TV series, with its memorable characters, political neutrality, and distinctive sound effects, left a lasting impact on audiences and became a beloved part of television history. Oh no. <laughs> oh, come on. You can't tell me you don't want to. The long-running TV series, which aired from 1987 to 1997, is remembered for its continuity issues and the producer's interest in wrestling. During its final season, the show briefly held the title of the longest-running scripted TV series, surpassing other popular shows at the time.
One of the show's notable continuity issues was the inconsistencies in Peggy's background. Her occupation, education, and family history were often contradictory, causing confusion among viewers. Despite these inconsistencies, the show remained popular due to its unique humor and relatable characters. The producer's interest in wrestling was reflected in the names of some characters. For instance, the character of the man was named after wrestler Ric Flair, and Luke was named after wrestler Rowdy Roddy Piper. These nods to wrestling added a layer of interest for wrestling fans who tuned in to watch the show. In conclusion, the long-running TV series, despite its continuity issues, managed to capture the attention of viewers for a decade. The producer's interest in wrestling was evident in the names of some characters, making it a must-watch for wrestling fans. We can spend the whole day together snuggling. <laughs> in the popular TV series, the character Al Bundy had a favorite show called Psycho Dad. The theme lyrics of this fictional show changed with each passing episode, coinciding with the character Bud Bundy's age. The writers of the series cleverly adjusted the lyrics to match David Faustino's real age, who played Bud Bundy. As the show progressed, the birth date of Bud Bundy was altered to ensure that the character's age on the show remained consistent with Faustino's actual age. This clever device allowed the writers to maintain continuity and avoid any discrepancies that might arise from the passage of time. Moreover, the series revealed that Peggy's maiden name was Wanker, a vulgar slang term in England. This revelation provided a humorous backdrop to Peggy's character and added to the show's irreverent tone. Overall, the show's writers demonstrated a keen attention to detail, ensuring that even the smallest elements of the show were carefully crafted and thought out. From the changing theme lyrics of Psycho Dad to the revelation of Peggy's maiden name, the show's creators left no stone unturned in their quest to create a memorable and entertaining series. <laughs> oh, gee, you know I have this funny feeling we've... Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, had a unique connection to the entertainment industry long before she became a royal. When she was just a child, Meghan visited the set of a popular 1980s TV series because her father, Thomas Markle, was the show's director of photography. The show, which followed the misadventures of a dysfunctional American family, was known for its irreverent humor and memorable characters. Meghan's father played a crucial role behind the scenes, using his expertise in cinematography to help bring the show to life. During her visits to the set, Megan had the opportunity to observe the cast and crew as they worked to create each episode. She may have even met some of the show's stars, including the actors who played the lovably crass patriarch and his long-suffering wife. Although Megan was just a child at the time, her experiences on the set of the TV series likely had a lasting impact on her. As she grew up and pursued her own career in the entertainment industry, she may have drawn on the lessons she learned from watching her father and his colleagues at work. Today, of course, Megan is best known for her role as an accomplished actress and her work as a royal. But her early experiences on the set of the TV series serve as a reminder of the diverse and fascinating paths that can lead people to success in the entertainment world. <laughs>